Um, all right, guys. So in this episode, I'm going to finish uh, the uh, solution of the uh, first price auction. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to continue uh, starting from the point that we left in the previous episode. So I'm going to solve this first order linear differential equation. Uh, remember, uh, the derivative of B, uh, the strategy function, uh, it was equal to uh, S minus B of S times N minus 1 multiplied by small f divided by capital F. All right. Well, I am going to, I mean, there are different ways of solving this uh, linear differential equations. Well, one way, probably the easiest, is the following. So do the cross product. So multiply B prime S term with the capital F. All right. So we have this capital F times B prime S. And, and also take this bs times n minus 1 fs term to the left hand side, so it becomes plus, and leave everything else, s, n minus 1, and a small f on the other side. Okay? Well, when you look at this, uh, so you basically capture, uh, get a hunch about what is going to be the next step. So this is very much like the derivative of b times f. Right, uh, I, I take the derivative of b first, multiplied by f, and then I, t I, 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 I multiply, uh, I take the derivative of f, uh, and then multiply it by b. But the thing is, we have this n minus one term. So where is this coming from? Well, um, when I take the derivative of f, probably um, it is not actually the f function, but it should be some sort of f to the power n minus 1, and so n minus 1 is probably coming from there. All right, so n minus 1 power of capital F. And so, but the thing is, we don't have uh, this term here, right? We don't have f to the power n minus 1. So how can I make this where I have f to the power n minus 1 here, and this looks like the derivative of f to the power n minus 1? Well, simple, multiply both sides by f to the power n minus 2, all right? Well, that's not going to change the equality. So here, basically, in the next step, I multiply both sides by f to the power n minus 2. Obviously, this becomes f to the power n minus 1 because I already have f here. So I have f to the power n minus 2 here, same here. Well, so then this is nothing but, I mean, the left-hand side is nothing but the derivative of f to the power n minus 1 times b, derivative with respect to s, the signal. While on the right-hand side, what do I have? I just leave it as is. Okay, well, now how can I get rid of this derivative sign? Well, simple, antiderivative. I mean, take the integral of both sides, right? But you have to be careful about, well, this is one way, I mean, this is the way of solving uh, differential equations, right? So when you take the derivative, what are going to be the boundaries of those derivatives? Well, remember, s, the signals are coming from the interval s lower bar and s upper bar. But the thing is, I have to first get rid of this s because I am going to take the integral and and then and this boundaries are going to be from s lower bar all the way up to s. All right, and so there's going to be too much s's. Um, in order not to confuse myself later, I rewrite this exactly the same equation. All right, so uh, let's get rid of this for now. So I rewrite this entire equation uh, by changing s with t, all right? So here I just put t whenever I see s. So this equation basically becomes this, all right? As I said, uh, they're exactly the same thing. I just change the variable. Well, now take the integral of both sides where t is coming from, remember t is also a signal, it's just I'm using a different name. Uh, t is coming from s lower bar all the way up to s, all right? Um, well then, uh, solve this uh, uh, integral. Well, the left-hand side is simple because integral of a derivative of a function, is, uh, remember, integral is antiderivative, and so this uh, derivative is basically will cancel out this uh, integral in a sense. Uh, but also, 
you have to be careful about the boundary conditions. So it's going to be basically f n minus 1 uh, t equals s b t equals s minus f n minus 1 t equals s lower, oops, s lower bar uh, b t equals s lower bar. Okay, well, the thing is, you don't really have to worry about this term. Why is that? Well, because remember, the, uh, the, the cumulative distribution function f was distributed in the interval s lower bar, s upper bar, which basically means f of, uh, well, whether it's multiplied n minus 1 many times, doesn't matter, f to the power n minus 1, or just f itself, s lower bar is nothing but 0. Okay, so therefore this term is just zero. So we only have this. So I don't want to write it as t equals s, I'm just gonna say s. But let's leave it here and let's find this, uh, the, the right hand side. Well, the right hand side needs a bit more calculation. So I take the right hand side here from s lower bar up until uh, up to s t n minus 1 f of t f to the power n minus 2 uh, dt. Well, how am I going to solve it? I don't know if you remember this from your calculus. Uh, we have this formula. If you have an integral uh, u dv, well, you, basically you can basically write it as u times v minus v du. All right? So if you use this trick, we can solve it. All you have to do is to determine what u is, what dv is. So here, uh, u is going to be t, and dv is everything else. All right, so this is dv, and this is u. Well, if u is equal to t, then du is nothing but dt itself. And if dv is this guy, how do I find f? Well, just take the integral of both sides, right? So therefore, v is equal to this term. Well, what is this term? Well, remember, uh, this term is basically a, a derivative of this. So if you look at this f of n minus 1 t, its derivative with respect to t is n minus 1 times derivative of f, which is small f, times f to the power n minus 2 dt. So therefore, this is v. Hence, I can write this, so this guy is nothing but u times v, meaning t times, uh, so let me write it, it's t times uh, u times v, uh, f of n minus 1t, but don't forget the boundary conditions, s lower bar s, uh, minus v du, the integral s lower bar s, uh, v du is, uh, v is equal to f of n minus 1t, and then du is equal to dt, okay? Uh, we can't find this uh, in in integral if we don't know the f function, so we just leave it as is. So once again, uh, because f function is going to take zero value uh, when uh, it is s lower bar, we can just write it as s times f of uh, n minus 1 s minus this guy, okay? So the right-hand side, we already know the left-hand side. The right-hand side is apparently s, f to the power n minus 1 s, uh, minus s lower bar up to s, f of n minus 1 t dt. Well, remember my purpose was to solve the b s function or the b function. So here I know what b function is. Well, they're equal, don't forget that. So basically divide both sides by f to the power n minus one. So this guy and this guy will cancel out. So I'm gonna divide this f to the power n minus one uh, s. So let me write it here. Therefore, hence b of s is, so whenever you receive the signal s, your bidding is going to be s minus uh, this integral, uh, s lower bar all the way up to s, f to the power n minus 1 t dt, divided by f to the power n minus 1 s. Okay? So this is the bidding strategy, a Bayesian-Nash equilibrium symmetric increasing bidding strategy of the first price auction. Well. What we can observe is that, well, 
this ratio is always positive. It's non-negative, it's never zero, unless f is, f cannot be zero, right? Uh, and unless s is equal to s lower bar. And so therefore, this term is always positive, which basically means in the first price auction, uh, the bidders are not going to bid their valuations or their signals. They are going to uh, bid something smaller than their valuations, all right? Uh, so their bids are more conservative uh, in comparison to second price auction. But this is exactly how we solve the uh, first price auction. And in, in fact, we can use this approach that I was showing you in detail in part one, two, and three for any auction you can think of. Uh, meaning write down the expected payoff of the players and then, um, you know, uh, basically just use the first order condition uh, take the derivative with respect to the strategy function b and then set it equal to zero. Uh, well, obviously this, is, is this, this method is easier if you're working with a symmetric uh, strategy. And then just solve for the strategy b. Well, in case you get a differential equation, sometimes you may get a bit more complicated differential equation than this. Uh, but nevertheless, this is the general approach you can uh, apply to any uh, auction game uh, that you can think of. Okay, I hope that was clear.